All right, this video is on powers and roots of complex numbers. All right, so before we get started, though, I want to recall uh, from, a pre from the previous video, if we have two complex numbers in uh, trigonometric form or polar form, then if we multiply those two complex numbers together, then you get r1, r2 uh, times the cosine of the sum of the two angles plus i sine the sum of the two angles. Okay, so that, that formula was from the previous video. So with that in mind, suppose we had z equals r times cosine theta plus i sine theta. Then to find z squared, which really means just z times z, then we would get r squared times the cosine of theta plus theta, which goes to 2 theta, and then plus i sine 2 theta. Right? So what do you think would happen if we found z cubed? Right? So z cubed, which would just be z squared times z, so we'd be taking this thing right here, multiplying it times another z, um, and then following that, that uh, formula from before, would give us r cubed times the cosine of 3 theta plus i sine 3 theta. Right? And if we keep going, you know, this z to the fourth would be r to the fourth cosine 4 theta plus i sine 4 theta, so forth and so on. All of that leads to what is called de Moivre's theorem. So if we've got a complex number z written in uh, trigonometric or polar form, r times cosine theta plus i sine theta, and we've got n to be a positive integer, then z to the n is equal to r to the n times the cosine of n theta plus i sine n theta. So suppose we have z equals 1 minus i. We want to analytically find z to the 8th. In other words, we want to use de Moivre's theorem. Okay. So in order to find z to the 8th, what do we need to figure out first? Well, we want to make note that z is in what quadrant? Well, x is positive, y is negative, so we're in quadrant 4. All right, so what's r? r is equal to the square root of 1 plus 1, so we be the square root of 2. All right, so since we're in quadrant 4, I'm going to, in order to find our angle theta, I'm going to go use the reference angle idea. So I'm going to say, all right, the tangent of theta hat, and to use the reference angle idea, I'm just going to make everything positive, a positive 1 and a positive 1. So when you do the y over x, you would have 1 over 1, which is just 1. And that is going to give us an angle that's in the first quadrant. All right, so theta hat is going to be pi over 4. And as soon as we have the, the reference angle, then we can say, all right, but we want our angle to be in quadrant 4, so that's going to imply that theta has to be 7 pi over 4. All right, so now say, all right, z to the 8th. That's the same thing as finding 1 minus i to the 8th. And now, since we've got the trigonometric form, that's the same thing as going it's r to the 8th times the cosine of 8 times 7 pi over 4 plus i sine of 8 times 7 pi over 4, just following de Moivre's theorem. And when you do that, you get 2 to the 4th. The cosine of 8 times 7 pi over 4 goes to the cosine of 14 pi plus i sine 14 pi. And then all of that goes to, so all of this goes to just 16. So 1 minus i to the 8th power just simplifies down to the number 16. Pretty easy to do once we change our uh, rectangular form of our complex number into a uh, polar form, and then use de Moivre's theorem. Okay? All right, so now let's talk about de Moivre's theorem for finding complex roots. Uh, not quite as, as straightforward as the as, as just raising it to the eighth power. So for a positive integer n, and our complex number, again, written in trigonometric or polar form, has exactly n distinct nth roots. Now what that means is, remember when we have the square root of a number, you had two solutions, right? For example, suppose we had uh, 9. Well, um, well, there are two numbers that if you square them, you get 9, right? Those numbers are 3 and negative 3. So this is, the, this is the same idea. If we're looking for cube roots, then we're going to have three different numbers that we can raise to the third power to get the number back that we started with. Um, so the formula looks kind of ugly here. Um, it's the nth root of r times the cosine of theta plus 2 pi k over n plus i sine of theta plus 2 pi k over n. I'm using radians here with the 2 pi idea, but the same formula could happen with degrees, just using 360 instead of the 2 pi. Right, but I, I'm going to stick with radians. And then this k thing here, k is just going to go from 0 
all the way down to n minus 1. So if you're looking for cube roots, we're going to let k be 0, 1, and 2. And those are going to be the three numbers that are the cube root of the number that we're looking for. All right, so I don't have time to derive the, the formula on here, so, so feel free to ask your instructor where the formula came from if you're, if you're interested. All right, so let's look at an example. All right, find the cube roots of i. First thing we want to do is find its uh, polar form. So to do that, we note that r is equal to just 1, because i is the same thing as 0 plus i. And theta, well, picture unit circle, right? i is way up here, so theta would be pi over 2. So i can be written as 1 times the cosine of pi over 2 plus i sine pi over 2. All right, so the cube roots have this special form. So what we're doing is we're setting up the formula that's going to lead to all of our cube roots. So the cube root of 1 times the cosine of theta, which in this case is pi over 2, plus 2 pi k, all divided by the n. And since we're looking for cube roots, n here is 3. All right, once we have our formula, then we just let k equal 0, and then 1, and then in this case 2, and we're, we've got all our numbers. So for example, for k equals 0, you plug 0 in for k, you're going to get pi over 2 plus 0, all divided by 3. Well, that just goes to pi over 6. The cube root of 1 is 1, times the cosine of pi over 6 plus i sine pi over 6, and all of that goes to the square root of 3 over 2 plus 1 half i. If you were to cube that number, you would get back i. So that's one number. Then we let k equal 1. So again, we have the cube root of 1. So we're going to plug 1 in for k this time, and we have pi over 2 plus 2 pi. And if you take pi over 2 plus 2 pi, that gives you 5 pi over 2, and then divide that by 3, you get 5 pi over 6. So that's where this cosine of 5 pi over 6 plus i sine 5 pi over 6 is coming from, and that goes to negative the square root of 3 over 2 plus 1 half i. And again, if you take this number and cube it, you will get i. So it's also a cube root of i. And then k equals 2. All right, so plug 2 in for the k, and you get pi over 2 plus 4 pi, which then goes to 9 pi over 6, which then simplifies down to 3 pi over 2. All right, so this goes to the cosine of 3 pi over 2 plus i sine of 3 pi over 2, which just goes to 0 minus i. And again, if you take negative i and cube it, you will get back i. So these are the three complex roots of the number i. Okay, let's try one more. All right, let's find the fourth roots of 2 minus 2i radical 3. So the first thing we notice is that um, r would be equal to 2 squared plus negative 2 radical 3 squared, which gives you 12. So that's 4 plus 12 gives you 16. Square root of 16 is 4. So r is the number 4. We make note that this complex number is in quadrant 4, because the x is positive and the y is negative again. So again, I'm going to use the reference angle idea and find tangent theta hat, which would be y over x. So 2 square root of 3 over 2 just simplifies down to the square root of 3. And that angle would be pi over 3. That's the reference angle, the one that's located in quadrant 1. So that means then if we're in quadrant 4, that theta has to equal 5 pi over 3. So that means then that our form for our uh, complex roots looks like this. Make note that n equals 4 here, right? So we have the fourth root of 4, fourth root of r, times the cosine of your angles 5 pi over 3 plus 2 pi k all over 4, plus i sine 5 pi over 3 plus 2 pi k over 4. And that's the form we're going to start with, and we're going to let k go from what to what? We're going to let k go from 0 all the way down to 3, right? Because it's always one less than your n. So for k equals 0, we get the fourth root of 4 times the cosine of plug 0 for k, that goes away, you get 5 pi over 3 divided by 4, so that gives you 5 pi over 12, plus the i sine of 5 pi over 12. Now this is an exact solution right here, but if you need to take it down to the um, rectangular form, then the rectangular form would be approximately 0.366 plus 1.366i. Okay, so this would be the polar form, the exact form, and over here would be the rectangular form, or the approximation in this case. All right, and so then to get the rest of them, you k equal 1, you plug 1 in for k, that goes down to 11 pi over 12. If you k equals 2, and plug 2 in for k, so that's going to go down to 17 pi over 12. And if you let k equals 3, plug the 3 in for k, all that divided by 4, which goes to 23 pi over 12. And what I've squared off here in blue, those, those are all the roots, those are the four roots of 2 minus 2i radical 3. They're in polar form, they're the exact solution. These things over here on the right are the rectangular form, and you might need the rectangular form, uh, but that's easy to get to anyway. Yeah, as you notice, there's a pattern that's going on here with the roots, and there's a correlation to geometrically what's happening, so feel free to look that up or, or ask your instructor about it. All right, so that's it for powers and roots of complex numbers using Mr. DeMauve's theorems. 
um, study well. Please let me know if you have any questions.